It seems a long time ago now, but before coronavirus, we used to have things called dinner parties, where friends would come round to our house and sit at a table eating and drinking until the early hours of the morning, before ricocheting off lampposts as they stumbled home. Often, our guests would bring what a department store, if you remember them, would call a gift. And mostly the gift would be a bottle of wine. The problem was, I could never tell whether it was plonk or not, so unless it said Pomerol on the label, I tended to err on the side of caution and set it aside to take as a gift to the next dinner party we were invited to. For some reason, we also used to be given rather a lot of smelly candles. Now, I don't really get the smelly candle thing. When exactly do people use these things? Do they walk into the kitchen mid-morning and think, hmm, bit whiffy in here, I know, I'll light the bergamot and vanilla candle. Or is it more of a subtle hint that our personal hygiene standards are not as good as people had hoped and they're praying we'll light their smelly candle before we all sit down for dinner? I don't know. Either way, for a long time I put smelly candles in our dedicated smelly candle cupboard, thinking we'd use them sometime. But we never did, so we started taking one with the bottle of recycled plonk when we were invited for dinner. And it made us look quite generous. Except the one time we accidentally gave someone's orange and peppermint candle back to them the following week. The final thing people show up with are pot potted plants, by which I mean plants in a pot, although occasionally they might show up with a potted pot plant. The problem with pot plants is that our house is where plants come to die. In fact, it is to horticulture as the Mojave Desert is to aviation. The thing is, we've got so much else going on that none of us remember to water the plants. And by the time we've noticed the azalea has gone all Nicholas Soames, it's too late. So that dinner party gift lasts about a week at best. In fact, the only plant that survives the climatic conditions here at Guthrie Towers are cacti, which as far as I can tell only need watering every two decades or so. Now I'm not all that cracked about cacti, so recently I went to go and see if I could find a solution to the problem, something that would remind us to water the plants. The first thing I found was a thing called the Ikea chili pulver. It's a probe with a blue light at the top that you stick in the pot. When the humidity drops, the blue light starts flashing. But I fear the problem is it's going to be too easy to ignore that, too easy to think, ah, I'll do it later. What we really need is something which, I don't know, visibly puts 4,000 volts through all of the lavatory seats in the house until the plants get watered. Now that's probably overkill, but this seems a pretty good second best. It's called a chirp, and it's another sensor. But this time, though, it chirps at you when the plant needs some water. Brilliant! But how well do they work? Well, let's see. Now, for the purposes of demonstration, I've got an old plant we were given some time ago. Um, as you can see, this one's rather desperately in need of some water. Um, I'm going to pop it in there. And the second thing I'll use is a uh, basil plant, which, um, as you'll probably know, basil goes from alive to dead in about mm, two and a half milliseconds after it runs out of water. Um, we'll kick off with the chili pulver. Here it is. And uh, got to pop the battery in. Let's have a look. There we go. One of these small, I don't know what they are, AAA batteries. That goes in there. And then, as you can see, the blue light starts flashing on the top. You close it up again, stick it in the plant, and then pour some water in until the light stops flashing. So the second one is the Chirp. And uh, we put in a uh, CR2032 battery into that one with the positive side upwards. 
And there we go, it's uh, chirping away already. Uh, so we stick it into the soil there and press the button to set the water level. And now water the plant. And that's set its level and now uh, ready to tell me when it next needs a refill. As I thought, both of these things do what they say on the tin. But without doubt, it's the chirp that works best because a noise is better at getting me to do something than a flashing light. So that solved that problem. Now, if you're coming for dinner with us when this bloody lockdown ends, you can safely bring either a bottle of Petrus or a potted plant. Just don't bring a candle. If you found this helpful, please subscribe for more reviews of useful gadgets. And if you know anyone else who kills all their indoor plants, do share this with them. Otherwise, till the next time, I've been Arlo Guthrie. Bye-bye.